I'm going to do a short video, something we've been talking about uh, on and off with uh, Dark Eldar and, and the Craft World Eldar, and how they they don't seem to be equally powered codices. Though I, I play Dark Eldar with my uh, my Hood conversion, and I, I think they're quite powerful um, if you're playing the the right mix of uh, units. You know, if you're playing Covens, they're actually a pretty tough army. Um, but anyways, one of the, the big discussions has been Fluffwise, uh, Drizar, who most people believe uh, is actually the first Phoenix Lord for the Striking Scorpions. So if, if you read the, the Fluff, Karandras here, he's actually the only Phoenix Lord who probably is not really a Phoenix Lord. He, uh, he was the student of Arana, or Arar, the uh, original Striking Scorpion. That Eldar fell to chaos, or became a Dark Eldar. Um, it's a little vague, but if you read through some of the older fluff in particular, um, it, it's quite clear that Drizar, the uh, incubus executioner of the Dark Eldar, is probably the Striking Scorpion's original Phoenix Lord. Now, for me, I haven't finished painting them, but I use... Uh, my Hrud, which are Space Skaven, and I've got these uh, Storm Rats as my uh, Incubi, because they're wearing armor and they have two-handed weapons, except for Drizar here, who he's got two weapons which he can clamp together uh, as demi-claves, versus Karandras, who my Eldar models are actually Eldar. Um, but anyways, if you look at their stat lines, they're absolutely identical. Drizar has the exact stat lines of a Phoenix Lord, including Eternal Warrior and um, the 2 plus armor and all of that. So, in many ways, he's a Phoenix Lord. He uh, is perceived to be a, an empty set of armor, just, you know, animated dust inside it in the previous Dark Eldar Codex, which furthers the they're really just Phoenix Lords uh, theory. So the question would be, if Drizar is really the first striking scorpion, um, and if the Eldar Codex is really written on par with the Craft Worlds Codex, Dark Eldar versus Craft Worlds, um, who's better? I mean, combat-wise, these guys are both close combat uh, models, and um, who's better? So I thought you know, probably the best way to actually do it would be just to show um, which one's better. So if you were to look at Karandras, versus Drizar. They both have a tremendous number of special rules, but a lot of them aren't going to apply, um, simply because they are things like Shrouded and Stealth, or uh, Fearless. They're all Fearless. Um, their two-up armor almost doesn't matter, <laughs> because they both can ignore it for the most part. Um, they have the same number of wounds, the same number of uh, initiative, attacks, everything. So, um, who wins if you put them head-to-head? -head? I'm going to go through this, actually roll the dice, show you what happens, but um, it would appear, if you look at just stat-wise, that Karandras is probably going to win most times, um, or they just mutually kill each other. Now, if you wanted to, to show it maxed out, these guys are both, you know, heroic characters, um, you would assume that uh, Drizar is going to uh, avoid fighting Karandras until he's, he's maxed out on power, so if his power for pain maxes out, he has a... Uh, Fearless, which he already has, uh, Feel No Pain, Rage, uh, Furious Charge. Karandras doesn't get anything as the game progresses, but he does have Infiltrate, so he really couldn't attack on round one, even if he wanted to. Um, so if we if we, we set this up, you know, they're both facing each other off. Uh, Drizar has no shooting attack, but Karandras has two shots from his uh, Scorpion Claw. So, if he does that, he gets ballistic skill 7, so as long as he doesn't roll a 1, he hits, it's strength 4, so he would do 1 wound, and then Drizar would have a 2-up save, and even on a 2, he's fine. And if they charge together, I think the way to do it is, is pretty much the way many Wargaming does it, um, in their older who would win, just have them assume to have charged equally, and uh, we'll see what happens. Okay, so here's what would happen. If they charged each other at the same time, on initiative step 10, K 
Ferrandris has Manda Blasters, and so he automatically hits and does a wound, in his case, on a 2 plus with no armor save. So we'll roll it, he does a wound. So Jazar takes a wound, he gets no armor, but he does have feel, from, feel no pain, and so Jazar is down one wound. So he's got two left. Then they both have the same initiative, um, and they've got essentially, uh, if they're maxed out, the same number of attacks. So they're looking at four attacks each, so Karandris has four attacks, Drizar has four attacks, Karandris has charged, and he has two weapons. Drizar does not have two weapons. He could, but then he wouldn't be AP2. But if he maxed out, he has a rage. So they're both going to have six attacks. Their equal weapon skill, Karandris is strength eight, AP2, because he's got a, a, a claw. Um, and Drizar is strength six if he is maxed out and charging. Um, and he's also AP2. So if you were to look at it, we'll just do Karandris first. He needs fours. Let's see a dice over here. So oh, he didn't do too well. He hits twice, he needs twos, and uh, he would do one wound here. And so that would actually leave Drizar with a wound left. Drizar does not get feel no pain from that because uh, Karandris is strength eight. So if we go from here, then Drizar needs fours. Slide these dice back into view. Um, so he'd hit four times. And he also needs twos to wound because he's got uh, strength 6 on the charge. And uh, in this time around, um, he kills Karandris. Not what I would expect, but I'm going to show you it again. So here we go. Karandris shoots and does a wound. Drizar saves. Then they charge together, and they both have 6 attacks. So Karandris, uh, he hits 3 times. And uh, he does three wounds, so he killed Drizar plus his Manda Blaster. I failed to do a wound. Okay, so Drizar would die that time around, and Drizar is getting to counter strike against Karandris, but they're going at the same initiative. Uh, Drizar is going to hit five times, and he's probably going to kill Karandris. Yep, he does. Okay, now when does it uh, change? It changes if. Karandris uh, is, is, is normal, but Drizar is not maxed out, so Karandris gets his two shots. Uh, he's blessed his skill seven, so actually he hit both times. And he does a rending wound. Drizar feels pain, so he's already down one wound. And then Karandris gets his six attacks. He hits on fours. So he's going to hit all but one time, so he hits five times. And except for the crazy dice rolling, yeah, he didn't roll all ones, so he kills Drizar. Drizar, on the other hand, um, would get four attack space plus five for charging. He's already down one attack. Slide these dice out. Oh, hold on, now they're all shuffled up. Sorry. Here they go. He hits only twice. And he only does one wound. So he just dies right there. So either way, um, these guys are kind of equally paired in some ways, but it, unless he's absolutely maxed out, Drizar is at a disadvantage. So in the end, pretty much it's Drizar that's going to lose almost every time, uh, just because his stat line is not quite as good with things like Manda Blasters.